It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> what are you doing, Kaya? Huh? Well, welcome. Part six. Oh, this is going to be a great day. This is where it starts to take shape as far as color. Whew. Kaya and I have been out for a little walk. I'm out of breath. Anyway, you're going to see the colors today of, of what we picked out. That's always controversial. I love it. I hate it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you like it. So we're going to uh, go inside where it's warmer and put some trim paint on. Hey, all right. <sighs> okay, I, again, I'm so thankful to be working inside this winter. So paint. We are ready. I'm going to paint all the fascia and all the corner boards in a beautiful trim color. Let's do it. Here's the grand reveal of the trim paint. I don't know what color green that is, but it's definitely green. And oh, it needs stirring, doesn't it? Ooh. I've had it for a couple of weeks and it hasn't, it's probably set after they shook it at the store. So we'll stir that up, get it all mixed up, and we'll put, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll put some, some on. A little bit of a pale green looks like. All right. Mm-mm. love having this all organized. I have all my paint rollers, paint trays, roller covers. So, and away we go. All right, Chad's over here. He's watching. Am I doing it right, Chad? First paint. So I actually come, whoa, a little drip on there. Uh, I think I may be a fourth in a fourth generation as far as um, pe people that had painted uh, ahead of me. My great-grandfather, grandfather, father. My brothers did for a while. Way back when my dad was in his prime painting, or he, uh, it, my grandfather, I'm sorry, there was a paint store. They had this huge vat that they would melt lead, apparently, into the paint. That was a big thing back then. But they, they, he had a store, he could custom, custom blend paints. I believe that was my uncle. Great, great, great uncle. Look at that. I'll go up in here and cut, cut in with a brush. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Woo! Let's get this other corner. And I'll come in with a brush. I'm going to brush the face of the trim. I just like the, uh, the looks of that more than just a roller. My dad would always get after me about daubing paint. Don't do that, he says do long strokes. Oh, that looks a lot better. Using just a roller tends to bubble it. You can already feel that starting to dry out. Uh-oh, I got paint on the window. No way. 
some kind of a professional painter I am. <laughs> There, got it. I had to put Kaya in her pen because I didn't want her getting into this paint. She would like to probably drink the paint. For me, this is a lot easier to put this, to paint the trim before the clapboards are on. And I'll, uh, I may something like cut the clapboard paint it, paint the ends anyway, and then nail it on. Feel like Karate Kid? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, that looks good. On to another side. Wow, this is some easier than 15 feet up on a ladder. Painting pressure treated. Typically they'll say wait a season, like a year, for it to dry out. Because if you put paint on while it's green, still really uh, water's oozing out of this almost, it'll just peel. This, I've had these four by fours for three or four years. They've just been sitting out under cover, so they're all dry. So I'm going to paint these to match the corners. Oh, that's just going to set it right off. I won't go right down tight to the bottom. I'll use a brush to finish that off. There'll also be enough. I think I'm just going to go with a half post. A lot of them will show a post going all the way up. I can secure that from underneath so it's good and solid. And I'll probably come halfway. So it's a fairly good wide entry into the playhouse. I think that would be a good idea. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. It'd be interesting to see, I'm almost done. See how much green paint I have on me that didn't get used on the building. The base is all pressure treated, the floor joists and the decking on the porch, and that's still kind of green. So that is not going to get paint.
All right. Okay, one other thing up in here is going to be unfinished. So I'm just going to paint everything green so it all blends in. Okay, all the trim is painted green. Look, how'd I fare? Uh-huh, except I'm left-handed. <laughs> I got a little bit on, but not too bad. We're going to let that dry, and then I'm not sure. I gotta think about it, whether I wanna do the siding next or the roofing. You'll see in just a sec. <clears throat> we are ready to roof. We're going to put cedar shingles on. They, uh, they should look pretty sharp. It's uh, just a cedar shingle. Going to put those in five inch rows going up. It'll be a five inch like that up on the roof. Uh, I'll go over some of the things that are necessary when doing a roof like this. I have, it, it's taken me over half an hour just to set my staging up, get everything ready. I have um, the chop saw over there. I have a, a ladder for old guy, so I can just climb right up and walk right across here. It's good and solid. I'm using a pneumatic roofing nailer to nail the shingles on. I have clamps that I'll be using on each end as we go up uh, with um, row by row. And then there'll be a, a board on there. So I basically, I can just lay the shingles right down against it, brrr, nail right across, and we're done. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how that works. So I think I'm all set. The only thing that hinders me from doing it is doing it. Should be all good. Here we go. This is pretty cool. I've been looking forward to this for a couple of weeks. All right. The cedar shingles, when they, when they cut them out of a log, they're all random random woods, none, none of them are, or very few are the same. That one, they're a sixteenth, eighth, quarter, half, three quarters inch, a whole bunch of differences. Anyway, when we start putting shingles on, I'm gonna start with uh, a wider one. The first, look, you have to do two layers on the bottom and they have to be staggered. So I'm going to let it run out a little bit on the edge Just looking for a quick gauge. I think that works pretty good. I want it, I want an overlap over the fascia so that it drips. I'm not using a drip edge. I'm just thinking with a with a playhouse. I wouldn't want kids hitting a, hitting the drip edge getting cut. Typically on a roof it's up far enough where nobody can reach it. I need a better gauge for this. But for now, let me see. Because I want it to hang over the edge on the on the gable end as well. Let me get something a little different. It's three quarters of an inch all the way. This one's going to be covered, so I don't worry too much about where the nails are. And I can see, I need a hammer up here. I didn't bring a hammer. There, it has begun. I can't really just snap a line across the top because even these vary in length. It would really throw it off. They also are not square. They, they'll vary out of squareness um, quite a bit from top to bottom. 
So this first row is going to be going to be slow going. You can see right up here on the top the the variance. They're uh, as much as a quarter of an inch or so. Come or go a little. Even the bottom is it's not square. It's just kind of a it, these are cut into blocks when they when they make these like 16 inch blocks of cedar and it's just a chainsaw cut when it's a round log so you're getting some of the jaggedness which is the which is kind of nice it's the rusticness of it <laughs> the rusticnicity i don't know if that that could be a word Mmm, smells really nice. Love the smell of cedar. There we go. There, okay, now we're gonna start over and we're going to put another layer right on top of this, flush to the bottom, and we'll stagger uh, all the, the uh, pieces. When they package these, they have them, they stagger them uh, this way and this way so that because it goes from, I don't know, three eighths to an eighth or something. So it's really just like that. I want to make sure I stay up above at least five inches. <laughs> I have a gauge. I made this, it's just a block. This is five inches from here to here. So the next row up actually, I'll be able to set that there and then I'll know where the next course will start. So that's about five inches. I'm flush there and there and there. And that's five inches, so I'll put a nail right up in here. One nail will be plenty because when we do the next row, there'll be a nail, one nail up here, maybe two, depending on how wide this is. Um, but that will go through this one and into this one. So it's going to double, it'll hold this as well as it'll hold it up here. Yeah. So now we just have to fit them. You kind of just hold them there and see which one works well. Because you don't want you don't want them lined up like at the grooves because when it rains, it's going to come down and it'll just go right through there and go inside. So you need to overlap the joints each time. The nice thing about cedar is when it, when it gets wet, it swells up and helps <laughs> seals it, interestingly. Okay. There it is. Now they'll just sit right on top of there. Coming right down through. And it should give me something to set some shingles on. <laughs> 